Hello you guys and welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. My name is Katie and I'm really happy to have you here. Today I want to talk about five things that you should be doing on your Instagram if you are a wedding photographer. These are things that I do on my Instagram to get more visibility on my posts, promote my page, and just honestly keeping up with all of the trends here today, so let's get right into it. So the first thing that you need to be doing on your Instagram as a wedding photographer is creating reels. Now, these are not new. I actually have a whole video on my channel with different reels ideas for wedding photographers, and I'll make sure to link that down below. In case you don't know, reels is like a video platform on Instagram, and it's basically Instagram's way of competing with TikTok. So there they're more short form content, I would say. I believe you can post 90 second videos now, but before they started at like 30 seconds or 60 seconds or something like that. Reels are kind of all the rave. Video is kind of all the rave. So if you are a videographer, congratulations. I mean, I know it's not always easier, but you have a lot of video content to work with, but as photographers, we sometimes don't. And so I think a lot of photographers struggle with creating reels because number one, I think you feel like you should be in the reel. And sometimes that's the case. There are trending sounds on Instagram or TikTok and that would require you to be in the video. However, that is not always the case. Most of my reels, I am not in. They are slideshows of photos, they are snippets from weddings, and then I also post like my travel stuff with my friends or my husband or whatever. A lot of reels don't have to be you. Something to keep in mind is is to watch trending sounds and just different trends that you're seeing other photographers do and not copying them but kind of making it your own style and like drawing inspiration. Some reels get really great views, some reels don't. Try to figure out the kinds of sounds, the kinds of hashtags, the kinds of like posts like time of day works for your audience, for your page. And I will say, for an example, on my Instagram right now, one video I, or reel that I posted was my recent trip out to Texas. If you don't know this about me, I am based in North Carolina now, but I was born and raised in Texas for my entire life. So I went back to see my friend, went back to my hometown, and it was a really fun time. And I just took like a couple second videos every single day of different things that we did. It was a lot of food, but I did that throughout my whole trip, kind of compiled it all together, put it to some music, and posted it on my Instagram. For some reason, that video did so well in the first like 24 hours it was posted and it had over 5,000 views. Maybe that is a, not a lot to you, but 5,000 views is a lot to me. So it had so many views, but then there is a recent engagement session that I did that I also posted on my Instagram and it did not get that many views in the first 24 hours. But the difference between those two is the engagement session reel is continually getting more engagement. I notice it a lot, like on my notifications right now, so many people are liking that video versus my initial like travel vlog reel got a really big spike at the beginning, but no one's really engaged with it since. The engagement shoot reel has like, had this like steady climb. And I've noticed that with some of the weddings too. So don't be discouraged if you post a reel and it doesn't get a lot of views right away, but there are also a lot of reels that I've seen and that I've posted that get a lot of engagement, a lot of views right at once, and then no one really ever sees them again. So I think it's a part of testing to see what time, what day, what kind of content works for your page. But the point of this all is to do it. Like reels and video is really important. So if you need some more ideas of what to do, you can follow me on Instagram or you can watch my reels for photographers. Um, I'll link that video down below. But if you want to be seen, I get more followers, more engagement from posting reels than I do for just posting images. The second point and the second thing that you should start doing on your Instagram, if you're not doing it already, is to tag all the vendors in your post from a wedding, 
of course. So let's say you did this beautiful wedding and a gorgeous venue. Make sure to tag all of these vendors in your caption and also in your photo or video itself. Like actually tag it in that content as well as the caption, two different places, okay? Why tag all the vendors? For me, I really like sharing vendors that I love. <laughs> so if I think that somebody's doing a really good job, like a DJ, videographer, florist, whatever, if I think that they're doing a really good job, I want to build a relationship with them and recommend them to my clients because I love recommending people to my photography clients that do a good job. So that's number one. Number two, I think it's really great to build just community in this wedding industry. I know it's very saturated. There's a lot of different vendors out there, but if you find a couple that you really, really like, it's always great to kind of have this collaborative spirit and give them credit as well. Another thing is that these vendors have the potential to repost your initial post. So let's say you tag a florist um, and you took a beautiful bouquet pic and you tag the florist, they might reshare that on their Instagram. And now that you're you're tagged in that so their audience will see you as well if they share it again it's just great to build those relationships shops that I've tagged in like they'll share in the story venues they'll share in the story so it's just great to get in front of those audiences as a photographer because I think we have a really unique great position where after every wedding we come home with a bunch of content and it is a gallery's worth of content and we can post those on our pages. Florists don't really come home with content at the end of a wedding day. Their product is not content. If they don't take pictures of the bouquets themselves, they have no proof or nothing to post about on their pages. So we have a really unique opportunity that our work is the content that people are seeing on social media. So to get that in as many places as possible, get in front of as many audiences as possible is really important. If your photo catches somebody's eye, that's a really amazing thing because they may come back to your page, love your work, and then want to book with you. In addition, kind of building off of the previous point, the third is to invite the venue as a contributor to your post. And I'm going to kind of put an example of what I mean here at a post that I've done recently. You can actually, when you go to tag somebody in your Instagram post, invite them to be a contributor. This kind of allows you, in a way, to post on their feed and your feed at the same time. It's very interesting and I know it kind of started with like influencer marketing so an influencer can post and invite the brand as a contributor and then it ends up on both of their feeds and both of their profiles. So I'll try to put in some screenshots of what I mean here <laughs> and with me in like a venue that I posted or invited to be a contributor on the post. Why do you want to do this? Number one, you're giving content to a venue. I think it especially venues that you like, if you really vibe with the owner or whoever it is, it's always great to build relationships with venues. Building a good relationship with a great venue could lead to you being on a preferred vendors list and that's huge. I've booked a lot of weddings from being on a preferred vendors list. So it opens that opportunity. It gives them access to the photos but also it shares on their feed. So a lot of potential couples looking for a photographer that know they're getting married at that venue can see your work as well. So it goes a little bit further than sending the venue photos and having them post it and tag about you. It's almost like a dual post. So if you are a, a wedding photographer and you're posting like a sneak peek of a photo or a reel, invite the venue to be a contributor. They can accept or deny. So I'm not saying that as soon as you invite them to be a contributor, they will be. No, they have to accept that. But if they do, it kind of gives you a foot in the door to build that relationship and also just share the content. I love sharing the photos with the venues because like I said, my job is essentially I'm coming home with content and the venue doesn't always have that opportunity. So being able to share with venues, I feel like I just have a more like sharing community aspect of this anyway but it also is beneficial to me and it, I'm not gonna just leave that part out it's mutually beneficial to have this so if you are shooting weddings or engagements or whatever invite the venues 
to be contributors on these posts. Another thing that you need to be doing on your Instagram as a wedding photographer is to use location-based hashtags. I've definitely mentioned this before in previous like Instagram social media videos. Location-based hashtags are everything. Well, they're not everything. That's not dramatic. What do I mean by this? It goes further than just putting photographer or wedding photographer. I'm getting very specific. So if, like I said, I'm based in North Carolina, I can put NC photographer, North Carolina photographer, North Carolina weddings, but even smaller than that, you can do Raleigh weddings or Charlotte weddings or Greensboro weddings, Wilmington weddings, Asheville weddings, all of those location-based hashtags. You can also do something like Charlotte wedding photographer. And so when somebody's searching that term on social media, on Instagram, trying to find a, a Charlotte-based wedding photographer, for example, your photo has the potential to rank in that search. So you want to make sure you're doing hashtags that are relevant to your page relevant to your photo or reel or whatever you're posting, but also will give you kind of the audience you're looking for. So if you're trying to book more destination weddings, look at those hashtags. Look at the destination wedding hashtags. If you're trying to book more local weddings, look at local wedding hashtags and use them. Location-based hashtags are huge because I think there's a push now more than ever to search these on social media for your wedding vendors. I am on TikTok a lot and I've seen so many people recommend searching location-based hashtags for your vendors because a lot of the times, you know, we're not ranking in Google. We're not, I'm not going to be on the first page of North Carolina wedding photographer if you Google that. But if you search maybe North Carolina wedding photographer, like with a hashtag, maybe I'm on there. Probably not because there's a lot of us, but that's why we get really granular. So if you have small towns even around your city, so for example, there is the Raleigh area and then there's Cary, which is like a suburb of Raleigh, put hashtag Cary wedding photographer. There's a lot of wedding venues in Cary, so you might be able to get in front of that audience as well. So there's a lot that you can do with this, but I'm just saying hop on the train now if you're not already on it, because that I've just I've seen a huge push and a lot of wedding tips on social media is to search for vendors on social media. So for me, I book pretty much all of my clients from social media, so definitely using location-based hashtags has helped. And the fifth and final tip I will give is to keep posting photos. This is not a very trendy tip, I will say. A lot of people are saying go away from photos, just do reels. If you're not doing reels, like you're shooting yourself in the foot, you're never going to be seen. I think it's a balance. I'm a photographer at the end of the day. I know Instagram was originally supposed to be a photo platform and it's no longer just a photo platform, unfortunately. I love seeing people's photos. If you're a wedding photographer, if you're anybody really, I love seeing your photos. I love that we're still continuing to post photos. So don't stop, <laughs> especially if you love it. Like for me, I love sharing the photos of wedding days. Like that's what I do. I think they're beautiful and I love seeing it. I love seeing other photographers work. I love seeing like my friends and my family post photos. So even though it's not a grow your account fast tip, this fifth one, I encourage us all to continue to post photos, continue to share your content in a way that you enjoy in a way that you like. And for me, it's still posting photos. I mentioned before that I don't get as much engagement on my photos as I do on my reels, but that's okay with me because I enjoy posting these photos. Like that's what I'm trying to get at is if you enjoy posting them, don't stop just for the algorithm, you know? This is obviously like your decision. You can do whatever you want with your account. If you're looking to grow really quickly, maybe you disregard some of these. I'm still gonna share photos. I don't care. I don't care what Instagram's algorithm says. I'm still sharing my photos. I'm gonna still do it and I don't care. So there's that. And that is going to be it today. Those are five tips on what you should be doing on your Instagram as a wedding photographer. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel below and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.